Uh, my name is Karen Allen. I'm a dermatologist in San Luis Obispo. I've been practicing on the Central Coast for about 21 years. And I'm um, going to give a brief talk at the request of our Hearst Cancer Resource Center staff, Shannon DeQuisto, on skin cancer, because it is the month of May, I guess, is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, which is different than Melanoma Awareness Month, I found out. Uh, so I am going to focus more on the non-melanoma types of skin cancer. But I will talk, of course, about how to look for melanoma as well. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to follow basically the template from two different sources. And all these, all the you know, pictures that I show and everything are available on both of these websites. The first one is the American Academy of Dermatology, a8d.org. And you can find everything you need on that one. Another really good site that I found when I was preparing was the American Cancer Society or cancer.org and skin cancers. So uh, I'm just gonna follow their template. Right here. So types of skin cancer, the most common by far is the basal and squamous cell types of skin cancer. And the most dangerous, not by far, but the most dangerous is definitely melanoma. Mel melanoma in general is the one that is more likely to spread to the lymph nodes and metastasize. Um, but I have seen some pretty horrible basal and squamous cell skin cancers that can invade deep into the bone and become a problem too. So we'll get started with uh, basal cell carcinoma. So I'm gonna go through some of the signs and symptoms that you might see. Basically, it can be just a clear pimple-like bump. Most of my patients will say it's a sore that never quite heals, or if it does heal, it uh, makes a scab, and then it will heal for a few months and then reappear in the same spot over and over again, or a shaving cut in the same spot over and over again. I hear that almost every week in my practice. It can also just be a flat pink spot, like here. It's just irregular shape. It's not perfectly round. And it's almost a purple or violaceous color. So a scaly, irregular kind of patch. That would be a superficial basal cell. And I see those a lot too. Sore that doesn't heal or a little, this is called on the ear. Uh, it's a little ulceration and they call it a rodent ulcer, like a little uh, mouse had eaten a little hole in the skin. And the edges are usually kind of shiny and clear. Um, it's hard to detect on the scalp and the scalp is really thick so it can go unnoticed for a long time. And it can also be pigmented so it can look like a dark mole as well. And that's also basal cell, a pigmented type. But basically you're looking for a clear, almost shiny papule with little blood vessels that bleeds without picking at it, I guess. Um, yeah, and this is another example here. And here's one that looks almost like a mole, but it's a new mole. Um, usually my older patients older than basically 40 shouldn't get a brand new mole. And that's in front of the ear. And like I said, it can be a, a little scaly, a little rough, but it would bleed very easily just washing your face, that kind of thing. And then I'll talk about squamous cell too. It's also very similar. It's a little bit more of a judgment call under the microscope. So sometimes we say squamous cell carcinoma arising in a pre-cancer. Um, it's a judgment call looking at it under the microscope. And so it is best if you think you have either squamous cell or basal cell to have a board certified dermatologist do the biopsy initially because they can get a feel for how deep it goes. And if they're the ones who are going to be treating it, it's often hard if we didn't do the original biopsy and then we go to do surgery, we 
we can't really know or estimate how deep or how wide it went. And we also like to look at the pathology ourselves just to confirm how bad the type of skin cancer it is. Squamous cell is a little more confusing, could be well differentiated, which is usually no big deal versus poorly differentiated, which can be more aggressive. And so there's different grades of squamous cell. That's another common question that I do get is, um, which is worse, squamous cell or basal cell? And I've seen both squamous cell and basal cell invade deeply and go bad. So it just depends. And I won't say one is worse than the other, but I will say they're easily treated. And we'll get into treatment in a bit. Just go through some slides again. Squamous cell, usually a scaly patch that can develop in scars or it can start in, in just a cut and the cells try to heal the cut and they grow out of control. Uh, that's a certain type of squamous cell called a keratoacanthoma. This is a little eroded kind of scaly patch on the ear, very common. And squamous cell, this is the fast growing type that's almost like a wart that can start in a cut in sun exposed areas. So I don't think I need to go into uh, necessarily the, the causes of skin cancer, but basically, you know, 99% of them are from sun and when we're talking about basal and squamous cell carcinoma. And, um, you know, I, I think I've, I've heard, uh, you know, plenty of uh, long-term smokers who say, well, I never got lung cancer. So it's the same with sun causing skin cancers. There are people who are in the sun all their lives who never get skin cancer, but that doesn't mean that sun doesn't cause them in other people. So, you know, sunscreen can't say enough about that. Um, I'll get into treatment. Basal and squamous cell skin cancers. In younger patients, the gold standard is cutting them out if they're on the face and you wanna spare uh, a lot of skin, you don't wanna have a lot of, um, a large scar, then there's something called Mohs surgery. And we do that in our office where we remove the smallest margin around the tumor that we can and we process it while you wait in the office and check the margins while you wait. If there's a little bit more, say left at one edge at two o'clock or three o'clock, we go back in and just take that edge. And um, that way you spare a large scar. If it's on the other parts of the body that we don't need to conserve tissue, we can do six size them and do something oh, and or do curatage and electrodesiccation or scraping and burning. That's surgery. Uh, there's a, a lot of other ways to skin a cat, I like to say. Um, there are newer treatments that are just topical creams. <laughs> Sorry, that's my, my dog here saying it's time to eat. And another, so you can use a cream. There's a cream called Aldara that's used with a lot of success here, local treatments. It's a cream that you have to put on for four to six weeks though. And it is kind of a um, application process. You have to put it on. Um, we can freeze skin cancers. I haven't used photodynamic therapy for skin cancers. The topical ones that I'm talking about are uh, fluorouracil, which is used to be called Effudex, and imiquimod, which we use the most. Again, they're put on for four to six weeks. It gets irritated, it gets the own body's immune system to fight off the skin cancers. And it works really well on things on the trunk. I don't use them too much on the nose, um, but what I do use a lot in my office is superficial radiotherapy, which is different than true um, radiation, for example, for breast cancer or something, the radiation that I use in my office 
only goes down about a half a millimeter, sorry, about five millimeters into the skin. Uh, but I can get great results on the legs, the arms, uh, places that are hard to heal if you cut them out or do C and D. So I'm gonna just briefly talk about melanoma. Like I said, this is not Melanoma Awareness Month, but certainly it's the most dangerous type of skin cancer. Um, that said, over just over the last three to five years, there's a lot of newer treatments for melanoma. It's not necessarily a fatal disease like it was in the past. And there's melanoma that's very thin, melanoma in situ, and there's invasive melanoma. And it, it really depends how deep it is. Your risk of, of um, spreading to the lymph nodes depends on the depth or the Breslow depth. And that's something you'll hear, hear talk, talk a lot about because there's new treatments, immunotherapy. And that when, when you do get a diagnosis, uh, of melanoma that's deeper or has spread to the lymph nodes, that's when you get to see my husband, Tom Spillane, for different options. Some of them are great immunotherapy options. Opdivo are showing great results in melanoma. So the old treatments of interferon are rarely used anymore. But just real briefly for melanoma, we talk about the ABCDs of melanoma. If you're doing a self-exam, A is for asymmetry. One side of the lesion is different than the other. B is for the border, a little bit irregular. C is for color. More than one color within the, uh, a mole is, is not necessarily melanoma, but it is a, one of the signs we use. Pink even being one of the color or white within a speckled brown patch. And then D is for diameter. We say bigger than a pencil eraser. Though I have seen small melanomas, smaller than a pencil eraser. In general, uh, it has to be a mole bigger than six millimeters in size. And this is new evolving. So it changes over time. Starts small, grows, grows, grows. So I, I will often see a patient and I'll say, well, that one's small. Keep an eye on it. If all of a sudden you look down and it's bigger than a pencil eraser, take a photo of it and send it to us. 